What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Code Peterson tutorial. This tutorial has been a highly requested one and we're going to make a heads up display. It, it could display your score, your lives, your items that you've collected, whatever you want it to be. And we're gonna do this with tile swapping. Pretty cool stuff. All right, a few things to show you what I created ahead of time before this tutorial. I did need to, on my tile map, so using Tiled and, and Piscal and all those other tools that we've been working with for the graphics, I needed to build that heads up display, what it would look like in the size that it would be on this screen. Now it doesn't go all the way over to the right because we would only see this much of the screen at one time. So that means this, the dimensions for this up here for mine were eight pixels tall and the width was 160 pixels wide. So 160 by eight pixels is the size of that. And each of these items that's in here is eight pixels by eight pixels. So the heart, is eight pixels by eight pixels. The equal sign is eight by eight. The numbers are eight by eight. And the space in between is eight by eight. That's just me going in there, redoing that map and adding this up to the top. The other thing that I did was I made a tile map of my numbers. Now you can do this for as many letters and as many numbers as you would like from you know, whatever increments you want to use. I made a zero, one, two, and a three because I have three lives and on my level, I have three bones that we can throw that we collect uh, throughout the level on there. Uh, what that looks like when I'm done is I created the 160 by 144 the regular size of a just the Game Boy dimensions if we were going to make the minimum size of a level. And I put that 0, 1, 2, and 3 up in the upper left-hand corner. And I filled the background with that same dark color that we got from our other tutorials. And you can find all of these resources on GB Studio for those hex values of those colors. And again, you can put letters and all that. This is just a simple example. So you can kind of tailor this to however you would like it to be with your project. Once I had those items done, then I went ahead and here in my backgrounds, you can see I have my number tiles. I just added it in here as a background. And also my level one, I this was my original level one. I put in my new level one. And if you were creating a your game and you didn't want to waste a lot of space, you know, you would remove your level one out of there. I just left it in there. And I named my new one level one HUD. When I run my program like this, move off the screen here, and the heads up display stays behind. That means the first item of business we need to worry about on here is making this follow along with this. The easiest way is by selecting level one. We've done a tutorial not too incredibly long ago about parallax scrolling. So when we select level one and we look up here, there's this little icon here where it says background and it has my background image on there. I can click this and we have our parallax options and we want two layers and the height is going to be the height of our little heads up display up there. And for the speed, I will use fixed position and everything else is just gonna be speed of one, regular scrolling on there. All right, now if I Play this again and test this out. Move through here now. 
and this moves along with our screen, which is exactly what we want. Now, right up there at this point, it's just pictures. So when I throw these bones, that value doesn't change. When I run into a dinosaur, the lives don't change up here. I want to fix that. In order to do that, there's a few places you could enter this. Now, you could enter this script to work every time we fire the fire button that throws the bone out of there. Or we could also add this every time we run into an enemy or every time we lose a life, we could do that. Uh, I want to just put this in one location to show you how this would work. So the easiest way to do that would be looking on the on in it tab. Then we can simply scroll down at the very bottom, add an event. And this first part that I'm going to add in here is I will search for script and I want to attach timer script. And you can have up to four timers on here. You can choose the interval at how fast you want this to go, just so it's a little more active. And again, yours may change depending on if it's slowing down your game or those type of things. And I'll use 0 0.1 for right now. Underneath that, it says on tick. I'll click there and add. And I want to search for GB. VM script. This is like the computer language that's running in the background of this graphical user interface of, of GB Studio. All right, now I'm going to paste this in here. This is what I came up with that worked with mine. It's a little bit hard to see on that screen. I typed it in Word here so you could see what I typed in. These are the lines of code and I found this off the documentation from GB Studio where they have the documents and the information regarding tile animations and tile replacement. So with that we have VM underscore replicate underscore tile underscore XY then these coordinates. This is what like telling GB Studio essentially what we want to replace. I want to replace sprite 2 comma 0. Now if I look here on these graphics that I made to show you this, you can see how their numbering system works. So if I choose 2 comma 0, 2, I'm going horizontally, and zero means it's going to be on the first row here. And we start with the number zero. So zero is going to be that heart. One would be the equal sign. And two would be this number three. So these coordinates I'm giving you to begin with are for how many lives that I want to keep track of. That's where I got that two comma zero comma. Then after that, I have three underscores. One, two, three. And we have bank underscore BG underscore. And then goes the title that I used for the graphic that has my numbers. I called my number tiles. That was the name of that graphic that has my numbers. And the rest of it is filled out with that real dark blue. So it was a number tiles.png file. So here underneath this underscore is number tiles, then an underscore. Then I include the word tile set and a comma. That's just from their documentation. So yours would be different here by containing a different file name, whatever you name yours. Unless you call yours number tiles also, which is perfectly fine. Then you can just copy paste and match it up that way. After that comma, we have a space. Then we have another underscore bg underscore number tiles, underscore, tile set. And again, the only thing that's going to change on this is your file name. And it's, it's the same here as it was over here. And then after that, I add a comma. 
and then I have a capital VAR for variable and underscore lives. And even though I named my variable in the game lives as all lowercase, it still has to be all capitalized here. I'm not really sure why it's like that, but that's just how their how their program works for it. Uh, so here's like the bank. Here's your tile set. Here is your variable that you're going to use. And with mine here, with my graphics on this, that means if my my variable I'm using is lives in this case, how many lives my character has. I made sure to put zero in the first spot because they start with zero. So that way I didn't have to worry about doing any math with this or anything. I could just say, you know, uh, if lives is equal to zero, then lives is equal zero on here also. If it's equal to three, it's equal to three. Now, if it was equal to four, be equal to this blank space here. That way, I, I also don't have to use like if statement saying if this variable is equal to this, we're going to show this tile and, and so forth. Uh, that's the first line of code. Then the second one, same, it's the same framework here. Uh, we're just changing these values. So here is the sixth spot in, on my heads up display. The sixth spot is the number that is after the bone. So this is how many bones we have to throw. And I'm still using number tiles. And I'm still using number tiles because I, I'm using those same numbers, that same font that I created. And then the difference is the variable here is going to be bones, which is a variable I already had set up in my game. If you're new to this or if it's been a while since you looked at these other tutorials we did, I can show you those by, uh, for example, like clicking here on the event if we fall down a hole. And here it says we're decrementing our lives. So lives was one of my two variables. Uh, up here when we pick up this piece of ham or whatever and it gives us three bones to throw you can see here it's changing the variable of bones that's how i was able to tie to those variables and that's where i got those from all right now back here to our level one and again scrolling down here to the bottom this is that code i entered in there now just entering in the code isn't enough i also have to add references to the things that I'm referring to in this script. You can do that where it says add references. If I click on that, one of the references is going to be backgrounds. And that is going to be my number tiles. So the number tiles that we're swapping out with the information up here. I'll click number tiles and then it places it down here underneath. Uh, then the other two things I need to refer to are my variables. So here, add reference and go down here to variables. And one of them was bones. Have that referred to on there. And then I can add the other variable, which is going to be lives. That's the three things I'm referring to. Now I can go to file and save. And I can run this script here, there's this enemy, I run into it. Now you can see up here it changed that too because our variable changed and 0.1 seconds after the event of that happening or happened, then we changed that sprite up there from the three to the two. Cool. And I get up here and I pick up these bones and I throw one throw another one, throw another one. Now I'm out of them. I could fall down here. I have one life left. Zero tries remaining. And we go to the end. And when we start back, then because we restarted our variables on our start screen, uh, then it
goes back and it changed those sprites accordingly because of our script down here. And there it is. That is the script and the way to to create a heads up display with some tile swapping through this. Now a few things, or I guess the the key part of this is when you make those those maps, like on mine that has the three, the two, and the one, the parts that you want to replace, they have to be unique. Uh, so like earlier, I, I mistyped something in and I accidentally uh, had the value for this square here. And then it was replacing the sprite with all of those blank areas from this right here because they that's how those fit in there. And it, it caused a problem with that. Uh, so like when DB Studio talks about having unique tile sets or unique tiles, you definitely want to make sure that uh, you don't have any duplicates. And, you know, when you're when you're doing that with your tile map, too, that's good practice anyway uh, for those maps, because that saves you space for your Game Boy also. But try it out with yours. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Again, this is something I am not a huge expert with and have been experimenting around with this quite a bit and this is one way to do this so i'd be happy to help you try to figure out any problems that you're having or any different way you want to do this and see what we can do and if you've come up with some cooler versions of this man, share them down in the comments with us all because we can all learn from each other through this but i really appreciate you all taking the time to watch this I hope it's useful, and as always, I hope to catch you on another tutorial video down the road.